In one of my recent videos, we looked at some of the common causes of acute pelvic pain in women. Today, I'm going to be answering four commonly asked questions. Is pelvic pain normal during a period? Can pelvic pain be related to gas? What are some natural remedies for pelvic pain? And pelvic pain and varicose veins, is there a link? Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner with Ask Away Health. I share health information videos to teach you all about your body and help you live well. If you would find this kind of health information videos helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you know every time we publish new videos once a week. Pelvic pain can be described as the pain that you get anywhere under your belly button and above your legs. Or it may come from other parts of the body like the abdomen, but you experience the pain within the pelvis. In my earlier video, I looked at 10 of the common causes of acute women's pelvic pain. You can check out the video here and I'll place the links in the description box below. But now let's explore some pelvic pain related questions I've been getting since that video. First, is pelvic pain normal during a period? Sadly, period pain is a relatively common event for many, many women. This, however, does not mean pelvic pain is normal. Most women will experience mild or moderate cramping pain during a period that might not prevent them from carrying out their usual activities and they just get on with it. They may happen at the start of the period or a few days before the period is due to start. However, some of the ladies may experience severe, very painful periods that just prevent them from doing anything throughout the time of their menstrual period. In some cases known as primary dysmenorrhea, we think painful periods happen as a result of excess amounts of the chemical prostaglandin which is produced in the body but causes the muscles and the blood vessels in the womb to contract and spasm. Naturally in all ladies the levels of prostaglandin are high around the first day of the period after which they start to fall as the womb lining is shed and the pain becomes less. If you make higher levels of prostaglandin then you might experience more painful periods than others. The second type of painful period is known as secondary dysmenorrhea. This usually happens as a result of an abnormal in the reproductive organs. The period pain with secondary dysmenorrhea worsens with time after the period has started, which makes it different from primary dysmenorrhea. It may also last longer than you would expect for menstrual cramps. Common causes of secondary dysmenorrhea are conditions like endometriosis or fibroids. And if you want to learn more about this, please watch our excellent series on fibroids and endometriosis which are linked in the description box below as well. Other conditions that could cause secondary dysmenorrhea are adenomyosis. This is where tissue from the lining of the womb, that's the internal part of the womb, are found within the womb muscle, causing pelvic pain and painful periods. Medical conditions like Crohn's disease or urinary tract infection can also cause painful periods. So ladies, please never accept painful periods as normal. Always discuss them with your doctor unless they've been diagnosed or they're, or they're particularly mild and not causing any problems at all. Second question, can pelvic pain be gas or be related to gas? So gas is the general term that we use when we're feeling bloated. It refers to a sensation of fullness in the abdomen in which your stomach might look or feel swollen. Sometimes it develops from overeating at a meal or if you've been constipated for some time. Bowel gas comes from a byproduct of food digestion inside your bowel. If you suffer from the condition irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, you may frequently experience episodes of excess bowel gas. The abdomen, as you know, is closely related to your pelvis. So if you do experience episodes of bowel gas, they can lead to pain in the pelvis. When you're constipated, gas may collect within pockets inside your bowel. Don't forget that some parts of the large bowel are located in the pelvis. And if you've watched my video on the acute causes of pelvic pain in women, then you know that there are lots of different tests that we can carry out to differentiate the cause of pelvic pain in one condition or the other. Number three, what are some natural remedies for pelvic pain? First, pelvic pain has many causes and the treatment will depend on the specific cause. However, 
Traditional painkillers can often help with the pain while we're looking at or treating the cause. Examples of these are drugs like paracetamol or acetaminophen or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines like ibuprofen, naproxen or aspirin. There are also more potent analgesics like codeine or other opiate containing drugs that we can use to manage the pain. However, for some people, these drugs may not be effective or they might have harmful or intolerable side effects that make it difficult to continue with them. So you might want to consider alternative solutions without side effects and here's a list of a few. Applying gentle heat therapy to the lower abdomen or pelvic area can help to relieve or dull some causes of pelvic pain. In this case you might use a hot water bottle or a reusable heat pack to accomplish the same purpose. Secondly, acupuncture is a traditional Chinese medical practice where a skilled practitioner inserts tiny needles into your skin in order to relieve pain or other conditions. Some studies suggest that acupuncture might work by releasing the feel-good hormone serotonin which helps in pain relief. Third, essential oils like rose oil or lavender oil have been shown to have some benefit in dealing some causes of pelvic pain from inflammation or from painful periods. 4. CBD gels, capsules, oils. Cannabinoid is a substance extracted from the cannabis plant which has found use in the relief of pain from several different medical conditions. We don't have any direct studies on the effects of CBD when used in pelvic pain treatment. Still, some studies suggest it may help with pain from endometriosis or dysmenorrhea from other causes. And next, diet changes. Some studies tell us that eating certain types of food can help to reduce the inflammation that is associated with menstrual pain in some women. Foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds are examples that can help decrease inflammation in the body. Unlike animal products, they help to reduce the amount of estrogen that the body produces. And this is how it works. When you eat many estrogen-based foods in animal products, your womb lining becomes abnormally thick. As the womb lining breaks down during menstruation, more prostaglandin is formed and that causes more pain. For these diet changes to work, they do need to be strictly followed. So the recommendation is to avoid the following types of foods completely. Animal products including fish, poultry, meats, eggs and dairy products, refined grains such as white bread, refined cereals, pastries and so on, added vegetable oils like salad, dressing, margarine and all cooking oils, fatty foods such as donuts, cheese, french fries, potato chips and so on. The recommended diet for women who want to use diet changes to manage pelvic pain usually from painful periods are Eat plenty of whole grains including brown rice, whole grain bread and oatmeal. Vegetables including broccoli, spinach, carrots, sweet potatoes, brussels sprouts. Legumes including beans, peas, lentils. And fruits including apples, mangoes, berries and oranges. And the next question, pelvic pain and varicose veins, is there a link? Well, varicose veins are swollen, enlarged veins that most commonly we find happening in the legs. You may have seen people with twisting, spiraling, bulging veins commonly on the back of the legs. Well, those are varicose veins. For reasons that we don't completely know about, the veins become stretched and less elastic. This leads to a weakness of the valves inside the veins and they stop working properly. When this happens, blood then flows backwards within the veins, making them swollen. Being pregnant can also increase your risk of developing varicose veins. As your womb becomes bigger, it puts pressure on the veins in your pelvis making them varicose. However, for many women, this appears to improve after they've had the baby. Rarely, a large swelling or tumor in the pelvis, for example, ovarian cancer or a large fibroid, can put similar pressure on the pelvic veins, making them varicose as well. These conditions can be associated with pelvic pain, and this is how you could have a link 
between pelvic pain and varicose veins. Have you any other questions about women's pelvic pain, what causes them and how they might affect your health? Let me know in the comment section below and if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Also click the notification bell so you know when new videos come out once every week. Next time we're going to be looking at ways you can tell if you have a low libido but while you're waiting for that video to come out, make sure you check out these two here and I'll see you again soon.